Today we're going to transfer to another dimension with Oblivion Song Book 1 by Robert Kirkman. It has a 280 page count and the cover price of $39.99. Stay tuned after the video to see how you can get yourself entered in the giveaway. And here we have Oblivion Song Book 1 from Robert Kirkman, obviously the creator of The Walking Dead, which is one of my favorite reads of all time. Looking at the spine, you got the Oblivion Song there and the creators. Then on the back of the book, you have a, like a little synopsis of what's going on. A decade ago, 300,000 citizens of Philadelphia were suddenly lost in oblivion. Just a little quick look at the binding there. It is sewn binding, which is great. There's a little eye for you. There's like basically no gutter loss in this book, which is fantastic. You get these great looking book end pages here, and then a list of the creators. Creators. So you get Robert Kirkman, Lorenzo De Felici, Annalisa Leone, Russ Wooten. You do not get a table of contents with the issues listed in this book, unfortunately. It is just broken up into two parts, which is fine because it just reads like a real book. So it's not a, like a deal breaker on this. I didn't mind. You do get all of the uh, covers of the issues collected in the back of the book and the extras. So the book starts out and you see this man in this dystopian land. He's got like a sick gas mask thing on and this cloak. And uh, he's trying to rescue these people from these hideous creatures that are in this dystopian land. You see him shoot these people who are the survivors with these alignment darts, which uh, they realign the frequency of your molecules to place you back in your proper dimension. He actually wears a belt that does the same thing, but in this instant, he's being attacked by this monster and he has to use one of those darts on himself. So he and those people are transferred back to Philadelphia in the regular times. Um, you notice like a big wall with names on it and uh the man's name who's out saving people is nathan cole so what he does is he like works for like a government program of trying to go save people from this uh, oblivion land which happened from a transference 10 years ago then nobody really knows how it happened or why it happened but people were transferred to this area and monsters were brought into their world and there's like a whole section of philadelphia like closed off now they ended up killing all of the creatures there but there are still people that got transferred to the oblivion and are lost there so he goes there searching for people and this is one of the main reasons why he is searching is his brother was lost in the transference so uh nathan's brother edward was lost in the transference and he's basically out searching for him Here's a cool little part here with like, it's kind of like how uh, the 9-11 memorial is, the museum with all like stuff. So they have the similar thing from when the transference happened. There's like this photo here of uh, Officer Clark Daniels who had saved some people from a creature the day that the transference happened. So uh, Nathan is basically just showing the uh, Crenshaw family, the two people that he rescued in the beginning of the book, like all the history of what happened with the transference. And this is like a friend, Marco, I believe is his name of uh, Nathan. And he's trying to get him to help him because the government doesn't want to fund this operation anymore. Nathan has kind of taken it as his sole mission to go there and try and do it himself. So on going back, he ends up meeting this character, Keith, which is a, uh, he's a pretty sick looking dude, man. He definitely gives me some Walking Dead vibes. But uh, one of the main things about Nathan is when he goes to this place, he doesn't want to kill these creatures for whatever reason, because he feels bad killing them because they're not supposed to be in their dimension so he tries in any way possible for uh you know to deter anyone from killing these creatures these missions seem to be a little bit more dangerous as it goes on and this time that guy keith tries to kill nathan so he ends up having to use an alignment dart on himself to get himself out of oblivion and back to his regular dimension in philadelphia nathan's girlfriend heather is like worried about him at this point and basically thinks it's somewhat of a lost cause to have him uh, going out and doing all this stuff back in the oblivion dimension keith is met by this group of survivors they don't really like keith because they consider him a murderer or a killer because they think that he killed his children and wife but he claims that these faceless men killed his family and back in philadelphia in the normal dimension uh duncan one of nathan's friends he was uh rescued from the oblivion zone from nathan and he has kind of like ptsd so he wakes up in the middle of the night scaring the shit out of his wife bridget just having these dreams of like creatures attacking him and whatnot so at this point in the story here nathan goes back to oblivion and he ends up uh, meeting up with this group. They end up saying that their leader's name is Edward or Ed. So he has hope that, you know, it is his brother that he's been searching for this whole time. 
But while this is going on, the government shows up. This dude, Director Ward, he wants to shut this shit down. Apparently, Nathan has been working on some sort of thing in like a garage somewhere. And they want to get a hold of it and figure out what that thing is. He's kind of like a security threat. And back in the Bolivian world, it is uh, true that Edward is there and has survived. So Nathan is uh, reunited with his brother and... You know, they end up having, like, a meal of these creatures together. Uh, Edward kind of, like, loves this place, man. It's, like, his new home. Like, he never was anything when he was back in Philadelphia before. So he likes this new world of being able to survive on his own and lead these people there. So he, like, digs the Oblivion a damn lot. And I should mention quick, the reason why it is called Oblivion Song is because when you're in the Oblivion world, the sounds of the creatures and everything around... Uh, Nathan describes as haunting but beautiful and he calls the sounds of the creatures and environment the oblivion song so that's what the uh, oblivion song comes from it's just the sounds and whatnot of the creatures while you're in the oblivion world which all this reminds me a lot of uh, the mist if you've ever seen that movie which is a fantastic Stephen King novel uh, a lot of this reminds me of that so getting back into the regular world in Philadelphia uh, your boy Nathan Cole is arrested because they found that equipment in the garage there and it like turns out that he had been working on this device and the device is what caused the transference in the first place. So not only is, uh, you know, he's out there looking for his brother, but he caused the transference that happened 10 years ago to all these people. Like a bunch of these people were murdered uh, by these crazy creatures. So and he his like group of friends here, they didn't know that he was uh, the part of it. So. While he's in jail, his girlfriend Heather ends up coming in and giving him some of those alignment darts. So he's able to uh, transfer into the other dimension and then transfer back and, uh, you know, escape there. And he's trying to plan on getting the device because, of course, when a government gets that sort of device, what they think about doing with it immediately is using it for some sort of like military tactical thing. So they're going to think of like doing all sorts of fucked up things to other countries and shit with this device that Nathan created. So he teams up with his brother and that's the main mission of like the end arc of the story here is him and his brother Edward are going to try and get this device back and they're going to get it out of the hands of the military to destroy it. The story is just solid man. I absolutely love it. I mean Robert Kirkman is great with writing man. Nobody does it better than him in my opinion. He's definitely probably my favorite writer of all time. The artwork throughout this book is incredible. I love the colors. I love just the detail and the artwork. The creatures look really cool. I love the way the characters are written in this book too. I mean, Robert Kirkman always does a great job with that, with like the relationship between the characters and whatnot. You have Duncan and his wife, Bridget. You have Heather and, uh, you know, Nathan there. And then Nathan's relationship with his brother, Edward. So it's just like wonderfully written, man. So getting to the end of the book here, you have uh, Edward. He doesn't really want to uh, live in this world he wants to stay in the dimension of the oblivion back where he was before so he ends up like having another transference happening so more monsters and creatures and all that come into another area of philadelphia and they start attacking everyone and whatnot definitely a real dick move from edward there i must say you know uh nathan's been doing all this time trying to save him and he ends up just doing another transfer and bringing all these creatures to philadelphia and they start murdering people again so definitely a dick move you get these cops here who are trying to be heroic like the officer clark daniels that was in the uh, memorial museum but uh of course in true robert Kirkman uh, fashion they just get absolutely destroyed by creatures <laughs> because that's what he always does so getting to the end of the book here man it's a big standoff between uh, this sick ogre thing this big ass creature I love the way that the creatures are drawn in this book too man it's just fantastic but uh and getting to the end of this man you know your boy Nathan sends his brother back to the uh, dimension that he wants to be in and he ends up smashing the device that he used for the transference in the first part so and then uh, your boy Duncan he goes to like an AA meeting for survivors from uh, the oblivion and it's just an all in all great book man it's a uh, really good I can't wait to uh, finish the second volume of this you know he goes to the memorial here Nathan and he scratches Edward Cole's name off because he did actually save him uh, which is pretty cool um Love the artwork throughout it. Love the color tones. Everything kind of like matches great as you can see throughout the pages. Um, and then it ends it here with your boy Keith with the faceless men. So interested to see what happens with that. Getting into the back of the book here. You know you get some uh, some sketches and stuff like that from the artists. 
which is always cool to see in the back of the book here. There's a decent amount of extras in this book, honestly, too. Uh, but just tremendous artwork. It's just really, really good. I love it throughout this whole book. And then you get all these sick covers. Um, so you get all the covers collected in the back of the book here, which are all awesome looking. And apparently this has been uh, greenlighted for a movie from uh, Universal Studios with Jake Gyllenhaal producing, I think, and Jake Gyllenhaal starring as, I believe, Nathan. So it'll be interesting to see what happens with that movie. Um, all in all, I thought this was a fantastic read. Uh, if you've read it, let me know what you think about it down in the comments. If you haven't, let me know if you're going to. And as always, thank you for watching. The next giveaway is worldwide. One lucky winner will win the X-Men Omnibus Volume 1 DM variant Jack Kirby cover. You'll also get a Powers of X Issue 1 Diodato 1 and 200 Virgin variant, as well as King Spawn Number 1 Greg Capullo Raw Sketch variant. To win, you must be subscribed to the channel, like, and comment on a video where I promote the giveaway. When we hit 750 subscribers, I'll pick a random video and then use a random comment generator to pick the winner. Good luck!